Ola from Panama. I think we are live now. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Jessica Ramesh, International Living's Panama editor. And I thought today we could talk a little bit about the best destinations in Panama for expats, some of our most popular destinations, um, which are, of course, popular with not only expats, but also Panamanians. Everybody lives in the same communities here. So the communities that I talk about as great options for expats are communities where you'll be living with Panamanian neighbors, not enclaves where people are separated from each other in any way, whether it's a gated community or not. And I thought we'd start with our top three communities, which are Panama City for the city lovers, Coronado Beach, for the beach lovers and Boquete, which is in Panama's highlands or mountain regions where you can get slightly cooler weather and those amazing mountain vistas. Now, as some of you probably already know, I live in Panama City. And the reason I chose to live in Panama City was because I really loved the idea of having a very cosmopolitan lifestyle. I've always really enjoyed having a variety of things to choose from when it comes to going out. And I like it to be really varied. I like really fun restaurants, especially if there are lots of different ethnic restaurants to choose from so that one day I can have Panamanian food and another day I can have my Indian food. I'm Indian, so I gotta have that. And we have Korean and Thai and obviously Italian, French, Swiss, you name it, we have all of those different options here. And we also have plenty of options for entertainment. So whether you enjoy live performances, dance, ballet, orchestra, sporting events, whatever it is that you're into, you can enjoy that here in Panama City. And really it's the only cosmopolitan city in Central America and the only city here in Panama where you can have access to all of that. So I really felt like when I moved here, I was getting access to a really upscale cosmopolitan lifestyle, but for a lot less. I can live here on anywhere from $2,400 to $2,600 a month, and that's including rent. Um, I would probably spend $700 to $900 less a month if I decided to own my own property, which is something I was looking at before all of this happened with the um, the coronavirus so we'll see once we come out of this if i go back to apartment hunting but that's where i am right now um and panama city just really really convenient it's the kind of place where i can get anything i need delivered to my home from electronics to vitamins and if you go out shopping you i really can't remember the last time i said i wish we had whatever or i wish i could find or i can't find Nowadays, we have little organic supermarkets. You've got home improvement stores like Do It Center. So I really feel that I lack for nothing here in the city. Um, but if you're interested in having access to all of that, but not necessarily living in a city, what you could do is you could choose a place that's just outside the city. Hi, Joanna from upstate New York. Thanks for joining us today. So the next destination that I want to tell you guys about is Coronado, which is a beach area and it is just an hour's drive outside of Panama City. So for a lot of the expats um, and Panamanians who choose to have houses or apartments in this region, you have easy access to all of the city's great amenities and hospitals. Hey, Sylvia from Texas, howdy. And the thing that I really find interesting about the Coronado Beach area is it really has this sort of hodgepodge look to it. If you drive into Coronado, of course it's beautiful, there are trees everywhere and it gets more sunshine than almost any other part of the country, so likely on any given day you drive there and the sky is a cornflower blue and just the greens everywhere in Panama are incredible no matter where you go. But it has these meandering lanes and they're not all perfectly paved. Some aren't paved at all. And there are really cute houses, but some of them are kind of mansions. Some of them are just little cottages. So it just doesn't have a very uniform look. And hey, Chris from Las Vegas. And the other thing about Coronado is Bomb Squad Bob from Ohio. Hi, thank you, Bob. So a lot of the places that you go to in Panama they have this sort of colonial look to them. We have a lot of um, Spanish colonial towns where you've got that plaza. 
in the middle and then a little grid around that. Coronado didn't evolve that way. And it used to be sort of a ghost town where there wasn't much going on outside of holidays and weekends. But that could not be further from the truth now. Now you go to Coronado and there's this super vibrant, full-time community, tons of expats there. There's a satellite clinic that um, was started up by the prestigious San, Fer San Fernando Hospital here in Panama City. Now they have their little satellite over there. That added a lot of value to Coronado. And hey, Amethyst from Texas. And so the thing about um, Coronado nowadays is that I remember recently I was there and I was with a friend and I dropped her cell phone and I was able to find a place to get that cell phone fixed right there in Coronado and I was like that's it it's official you don't even have to go into Panama City anymore it's grown from what used to be this sort of little ghost town to um, this little hub for the region all around it so you've got little beach towns all around Coronado and you can live right in the Coronado region or you can live 10 to 20 minutes outside of Coronado and you've got access to large supermarkets you can buy hi Rob from Canada you can buy wine you can buy nice cheeses and produce hi Cindy from Pennsylvania and you used to have to stock up for all this stuff ahead of time, right? Like I would be planning a trip to Coronado to the beach. This is 10 years ago. And I would start, you know, making a list of everything. Don't want to get there and not have enough beer and wine for people who might come over or stop by. Don't want to, you know, not have the meats that people want to throw on the grill or the fresh veggies. But you don't have to do that anymore. You can get all of that stuff there. So it's really gotten to be very convenient. And of course, like I said, you do have access to Panama City, which is where I live, but you can live out at the beach and really have a lot of your conveniences there so you don't have to come into the city. The other cool thing is you have lots to explore in that area. So there are little mountain towns that are a 30 to 45 minute drive away from Coronado. Lots of places where you can go hiking, find little swimming holes, um, little mountain towns with a little bit of a tourism industry, hot springs, lots and lots to explore right in that area. Hi Judy Lynn. Hello Rick from Ecuador. So you can compare the beach living in Coronado to the next place I want to tell you guys about in the mountains, Boquete. And so I'm in Panama City. I'm all the way east. If you go all the way west towards the Costa Rica border, Kathleen, love you, thank you, you will find the mountain town of Boquete. And this is actually one of my favorite places. Um, I have thought a lot over the years about moving from Panama City to Boquete. Certainly society there is varied enough and there's enough to do that I would be happy in that regard. And it has really nice, cool weather. So Glenn, we're just talking about Boquete in the mountains. Now, a, a word about weather since I'm talking about how nice and cool it is in Boquete. Where I am in Panama City, it is your daily average temperature is 88 degrees Fahrenheit and then it tends to go down about 10 degrees when the sun's not out so early morning and evenings and because we are so close to the equator that doesn't vary much throughout the year we have a dry season which is generally january through march and then in april it starts to rain a little bit but it's a really manageable wet season from April through July. Usually it's very predictable. You get an hour or two of rain in the afternoon. And then you get the really heavy rains from August through November. That is also true of the mountain region of Boquete. But when you're up in Boquete, where the elevation's anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 feet, your temperatures are gonna be 10 to 15 degrees cooler than they are here in Panama City. It's a very high rain environment, lush rainforest everywhere you look, which makes for the most amazing views. It's, you know, cloud forest everywhere you look. But it, even though it's wet, it's humid, but you don't feel hot and sticky humid. It's just a lush, cool rainforest environment. So you do have to be okay with a lot of rain if you live there. I'm talking over 100 inches of rain a year. But if you like the idea of living somewhere where you can grow coffee, where all of like 80% of our produce is grown in this region, 
you, you think you might like to have a garden or even a small farm, then Boquete is a really good option. And again, if you find it a little bit too warm for you in Panama City or Coronado with that average daytime temperature of 88 degrees, then you might find that you're really comfortable in the mountain areas. Um, and Boquete has a very, very active expat community. They've started up things like a weekly Tuesday market, which is really fun to go to. You'll meet a lot of people, a lot of expats and locals there every week. They've started a community theater group, a hospice, a library, um, even a yearly jazz festival. So there's just tons going on and it's really fun. Now, I also want to tell you guys, um, if you're not bored of hearing about Panama's top destinations yet, about two sort of more off the radar destinations. And I'll start with Petasi, which is a little more remote. It's about a five hour drive from Panama City. So you don't have that quick access to Panama City, but there is a little hub town called Chitre, which is only about an hour's drive from Petasi. So you do have access to larger supermarkets and clinics and dentists, dermatologists, all of that good stuff in that region. And Petasi, it, it has a smaller community, a smaller expat community. I'd say if you compare it to Coronado, it's probably more of a bohemian international community. You meet people from the US and Canada, but also from all over Europe, from Israel, just a lot of really interesting people from all over living in Petasi. And it is one of the driest places to live in Panama. So even, even a little bit drier than Coronado, which is one of our sunniest places. So if you like the idea of slightly drier weather and not as much rain, it can be a really good option. If you like the idea of living on or near the water, um, it's also a good option. People who move to Petasi, a lot of them are really into fishing. It could be spear fishing or deep sea fishing. Hola, Peter, buenos dias. Um, buenas tardes, actually, because it's afternoon here. And then you have outside of Petasi, which is a little fishing village and also the greater Petasi region, you have a string of beaches and they're just not built up, not a lot of development. It's just a string of pristine beaches and a lot of them, you know, I've been there on days where I was the only person on the beach, so not a densely populated area. If you like the idea maybe of building your own little home, something simple, if you like the idea of living simply and you're not fussed about having a big grocery store nearby, then Petasi might be a really good option. Hola, como estas, Peter? Now, finally, I wanna tell you guys about um, the fifth place, the last place I'm gonna talk about today, which is Boca del Toro. Nice to meet you online too, Dee. And I don't know if any of you have heard about Boca del Toro yet. We don't talk a lot about Panama's Caribbean because we have a lot of Caribbean region that is actually national park area or indigenous reserve area. So there's a lot of the Caribbean here where you can't, there's no road that you can drive through and where you wouldn't be able to build or live. But Boca del Toro is actually quite popular with expats who like the idea of living simply and so many of them cater to the little trickle of tourists that go through this area. So it's probably our best known Caribbean area. Every bit as beautiful as the Bahamas or the Virgin Islands, if you've been to those, you, I'm sure seen you know those postcards with the clear, clear baby blue waters, and that's pretty much Boca del Toro, the white sand and the little rainforest growth in the middle surrounded by water that can be pale blue, pale turtle green, and then goes into deeper shades as you go into the deeper waters. One of my favorite places for when I have a long weekend, um, if I have three or four days to make the trip worthwhile, then I can hop an hour flight to Boca del Toro or I can do the drive seven to eight hours plus um, a half hour ferry. So as I mentioned, it does have an expat community. A lot of them do cater to the tourism industry there. So they have little eateries, little um, floating deck restaurants, little bars, little places to stay. Hey, Jim from San Jose, Costa Rica. And, um, and Boca del Toro, very close to Costa Rica. You're always meeting people in Bocas and it's a very eco-friendly destination. Right now you go there and it's 
you know, something that everybody is talking about, how to do composting toilets and how to live off grid. If that's something that you're interested in, then you would find a community of like-minded people in Bocas. And it's very busy. It's extremely social. There's always somebody to have a drink with. If you're interested in doing volunteer work, there's always something going on. It doesn't have to be party party all the time, although it is kind of a party destination. And there are some challenges to island living. It's incredibly beautiful, but it's a high rain destination. Anywhere in the Caribbean, you're going to get lots and lots of rain. We are completely outside the hurricane belt. So hi, Millie from Canada. So um, we don't get hurricanes, which is fantastic. But if you live in Bocas del Toro, you're looking at maybe 120 or more inches of rain a year. But you also see the sun a lot. Some of the other challenges include just being on an, on an island, you have to bring everything in from the mainland. So a lot grows there. So a lot of the produce is really inexpensive, but for imports or even your construction materials, if you decide to build your own home there, you're gonna pay a little bit more than you would on mainland Panama. Hey Marge from Iowa. So it has its pros and cons, and I, I'd say look at Bocas del Toro. We have lots of information on International Living's website, internationalliving.com. And I would say look at Bocas, just B-O-C-A-S. You can look that up on our website. Look at, yes, that's right, Krista. Look at it if you think that you're interested in really simple living. A lot of the houses there, hey, Patricia, a lot of the houses there are just you know, tile floor, little fan up above, 500 square feet, um, you know, just simple Caribbean living. And if that's cool with you, then Bocas del Toro might be the paradise you've been looking for. For me, I love living in Panama City and I visit Bocas all the time. So I feel like I have the best of all worlds. I visit all of these places regularly so that I can write about them and talk about them. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been really fun talking to you all. If I missed saying hi to you, I did want to say hello to everybody. Thank you so much for your comments and messages. And, you know, please keep stay with us on the Facebook pages. Keep checking out the website. Hopefully we'll all be able to travel again soon. Take care. No matter where you are, take care of yourself. Be safe. And I hope to see you again soon. All right. Bye, guys.